Hey, what's up guys? Tobin and Shanna here from the 5M Family Homestead Channel. <laughs> Today we are gonna measure our pig and try to estimate its weight. She goes in 29 days to the processor and we wanna see where we got her at. Yep. So uh, we had a friend of ours tell us about this method and we're gonna give it a try. I don't know how it's gonna go. She's pretty tame, uh, but we'll find out. <laughs> Uh, but first, we uh, we had a catastrophe while we were visiting Smith Family Ranch this weekend, and our watering system for the pig uh, broke. So we got to make a new waterer for it real quick. So we're gonna do that first, and then we'll get to measuring her. So y'all come with us. Intro. While we were gone to visit Smith Family Ranch for the weekend. Uh, my in-laws, Shanna's parents, were over and uh, taking care of the pig for us. We had, we've had this uh, trash can inside her pen pretty much since we got her. And um, she hadn't caused any problems. No problems, but she is getting bigger. So while we were gone, she knocked the nipple off of it right there. Not once, but twice. So. We've been doing a pretty good job of keeping her pen smelling good, but two full uh, trash cans of water going in there. Gallons. Yeah, so 20 something, 26 gallons. Um, it stinks really bad. So our yeah. neighbor is is actually mowing her grass right now, and we are taking all her grass clippings and putting them in the pen with her to mask some of the smell yeah. or absorb some absorb of the water some of because it. Yeah. it is humid outside. So this stuff is not drying up, and she keeps making more of a mess with it rooting it up. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build her a new watering system that is foolproof. I know it is, she can't break it. And then, like he said, we're gonna weigh her, kinda get a measurement on her, and that's about it. Yep, so what we're gonna do is right here in this corner, we're gonna put, that trash can still good, we're gonna put it outside of her pen in that corner on blocks. I got some PVC pipe, and we're gonna PVC pipe over about halfway, and then put the nipple through so that basically 98% of everything will be outside the fence where she can't destroy it, hopefully. So, we'll see what happens. around your place which we do here um, we use them to just about anything you can think of we're using zip ties for uh, especially when we're doing something uh, it's not permanent go on Amazon or you a pair of these they are called flush cuts and what they do is they cut the zip tie off the excess off flush where it doesn't leave something that you scrape your arm on when you come back or your leg on when you come back later I'll uh, turn the camera out of here and show you so this, they're, they're flat on this side right here, and they will cut that zip tie off. And there's no, there's no little sharp piece right there you can cut yourself on. All right guys, so we've come to the fun part. Uh, we're gonna measure the pig. So it says to measure from the between the ears to the tip of the tail. 
and then around the girth right behind the shoulder. So, um, let's see what happens. She's pretty content she's eating. Whose idea was that? Uh, my beautiful wife's. Mm. We're going to say 38. 38 length. Thirty-four girth. Thirty-four. Multiply the pig's girth measurement by length. For your example, nineteen thirty-six times the length. Right. Four hundred. So thirty four times thirty four equals six. times the length, which is thirty eight, mm -hmm. divided by four hundred. If that's that is very disappointing, very very disappointing. So this is saying she weighs 109 pounds. We were thinking at least 150. That's very disappointing. You sure you didn't do 44? Are you sure it wasn't 44? <laughs> so guys, it's saying she weighs 109 pounds. What do y'all think? Leave in the comments below. Let us know how much you think she weighs. I guess if she is truly 109 pounds, uh, we were given this information by a re very reliable source, um, th th this method uh, by a very reliable source. Um, so y'all let us know what you think. I mean, y'all saw her in the video when I was measuring her. Y'all could see me standing next to her. Um, we were hoping to get her up to 200 pounds and we got about a month left, less than a month left. And that's gonna be almost, I feel like impossible. But everybody does keep saying they're gonna keep throwing uh, the weight on. Uh, the closer we get so but it may end up being a situation where we have to push the date back a little mm -hmm. bit um, but the problem is all the uh, processors in this area are um, booked up for months if not more what do you think babe <laughs> that size is uh like this has been a i don't want it to be for nothing yeah so as much as i'm ready for her to go then we may just have to regroup our setup here and keep her for another couple months. Yeah. Because I don't want this to be for nothing and us get hardly any meat back. That's yeah. not the reason we did it. So. Yeah. We'll have to play it by ear, I guess. Y'all let us know in the comments what y'all think uh, on the wait over. So, guys, uh, we heard about this uh, tape method uh, from Brian Simmons of Old Time Swine. We were introduced to him by Smith Family Ranch. Uh, we were at, we went to Smith Family Ranch's, uh, their ranch this uh, past weekend. We spent the entire weekend with Jeff and Darcy and their boys, uh, having a lot of fun. And uh, one of the things we did is we went out to Brian's place with them and um, got to kind of tour his farm uh, and his operation while um, Jeff and Darcy were buying a couple pigs. And this guy, um, it's amazing how much knowledge he has on pigs. And I don't want to speak for him, uh, but I'll just kind of tell you the gist of what he's trying to do is he's trying to get back to the old ways uh, when pigs were raised more about the meat that they would uh, that they would give rather than showing them. So his pigs don't look, they look to me more like a feral pig when you go look at them. And uh, according to him, they would, you know, if he, if he were to put them in a show, they would not do good at all. Um, but they're going to give you more meat in the long run. So uh, Brian has started, uh, he's got a pretty good uh, uh, Facebook page, uh, pretty good following on there. And he just recently, the last few days, I think me and uh, myself and uh, Jeff Smith have uh, finally talked him into uh, starting his own YouTube page. So 
at the time of this video, he doesn't even have a, a video of his own out yet on that YouTube page, but hopefully by the time I put it out, he will. I'm gonna put a link in the description. I'll put an iCard up. Um, Y'all go check him out, show him some love. I'm gonna roll some footage right now of uh, when we were there showing some of his pigs and uh, of him talking and uh, explaining what he's doing there. Uh, I'll roll that right now. <laughs> What's the watering situation? Yeah. Are these the ones over here? Cool, I don't know. This is Tobin and Shane. That boy there, he's right out of gear. Okay. The Hampshire. A year old? Mm -hmm. Wow. Please come down there. The that Hampshire a year old? Where is it? Uh -huh. wow. So Brian, tell us uh I am recording. Tell us the difference between what you're talking when when you talk show line versus old time line. What Okay, like uh for example like on the board, you see he's he's got the the arch in his bag. Versus your show line pig's got that flat bag. So it's what that does, it gives him, it's what they call youth, or he has expansion in his skeleton. So it relieves the pressure points on him. Your uh, show line pigs that's got the flat back to them, once they get so big, it's pretty much, if, if you raise them up past market weight, you know, it starts putting real bad pressure points on their joints. That's why you'll see them starting to walk funny because their body, they were just made to get big quick and weren't made for anything else. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. What? Then, They're out. What? Oh, the little awesome ball, they get out. Oh. <laughs> they, uh, and also, of course, these girls here are still young, but you look at the depth in their, in their stomach and in their chest and also on the boars. The, they have a deeper chest cavity. So it's easier on them, you know, for farrowing. If you have less chance of uh, all the piglets being stillborn, hmm. you know, they have room in there for them to grow. Okay. Of them all being bunched up and maybe sure. squishing one or something like that. So that makes a big difference too. And then you'll notice on on all of them, they don't have the big bubble hams, you know, like you see on the show line stuff. Yep. All right. Is what that does. These hams here will actually be as big or bigger. They're they're just longer, not the short fat. fat. If that makes sense. No, what you're because we have a duroc. That's what we have, and everything you're describing. We bought ours from a, it's a coal pig. It's a show mm -hmm. coal, yeah. and it has everything that you're saying. Like every, it has everything that yours does not have. Yeah, if, flat back. You know also the. If you if you look at these gilts or even the boars, if you look at them head on, you'll notice their bodies are rectangle instead of barrel shape. Yeah. And that's a dead giveaway on the old line versus the show line. Oh, like, what does that do for meat quality? Anything or is it just simple show at this point? Well, uh, it has to do with meat quality because yes, somewhere Daddy. down the line, the pea train pig was bred in and people just lied about it. That's where you get that round barrel shape from. You get that double muscle look bubble ham and things of that sort. You get the flat back, you know, the like I say, the chest being barrel shaped, so it's up tight. You just you lose that cavity for the piglets to grow. And... Get these lines. I mean, what have you been to Missouri and Georgia? Uh, our also ball all come from Georgia, uh, from a breeder down there. I'll show you them here in a minute. Uh, all of our Hampshire and Duroc come from the same guy in Alabama. Uh, really? It, him and uh, him and his brother have been raising uh, their Hampshire since the I think since the '60s. You know, and they didn't, you know, change with the trend when the pork industry changed and went with the, you know, the fat is bad, going with the white meat mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. You know, even on our Hampshire, <clears throat> the meat from them versus the show line Hampshire, the meat, even just the look of it is a night and day difference. Really? All, all of these pigs, the Duroc, Hampshire and everything have all been DNA tested for their meat quality, fat quality, their growth. You know, the moisture retention. Yeah, you know, so they've really put in the work over the years to keep pigs what pigs are supposed to be. That's interesting. I was telling Tobin too about your awesome ball pork shoulder that you did that you put salt and pepper on. <laughs> oh, that was the Swabian Mule. Oh, the Swabian Mule. Yeah. Okay. You said that was the best 
it was amazing. <laughs> it just salt and pepper. Yeah, it was really good. Give me an example, you could put our Hampshire or our Duroc in a show. Our pigs will get dead last because it's not the look right. and that's right. all they go for. Them. It's not about the meat quality. Yeah. So even though you could run DNA tests on them and our pigs and the place where we got them from are going to be the purest that they're that are in that ring. They're going to get dead last in the shed. Because they're not, they don't look. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they want the short, low to the ground, stubby That's, legs, big muscle. And see, the reason they called our pig, what they told us is because her body's, her body's as long yeah. as his is. Mm -hmm. And they did, they want a short body. Yeah. yeah. Also, too, uh, you'll see it a lot more in the Hampshire. Uh, for the most part, you'll see it in the Duroc, which they're, the Duroc just naturally has a larger loin eye. Yep. So it's it's harder to tell as you really know what you're looking for. But uh, all the pigs, especially pigs with a rectangle shape, their loin eye is going to be more of a kidney shape instead of that perfectly round. round. Okay. And that has to do with the, their body shape. Okay. You know, the... What the <laughs> okay, just a minute. Look at you. But, uh, and that's because, like I was saying, you know, they have the rectangle shape versus that round barrel shape. Okay. That makes sense. Hey, wrangle the pig. No, not yet. Then uh, this black one laying down. This Man, they do look like a wild hog. That long nose. Yeah. I mean, you, if I ugly. And what what is, what breed are those? Ossibor. Ossibor. But because they've been on that island so long, of course, with inbreeding and everything else, and limited food, limited space, they adapted. So they now have what they call the dwarfism gene. Okay, that's common for uh, things that grow on islands. I've heard. Yeah. But these pigs here, the meat is wonderful. But because they're so much smaller now, you just don't get much of it. But if you feed them like if you were to pour the feed to them, it wouldn't be nothing for these pigs to put on a orange bag. Really. How to get a hold of you? Uh, that's here. Uh, we're Old Time Swine. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, we haven't got a website yet. That's you know in the works down the road. Okay, but they can look you up on Facebook if oh, they yeah. they want to buy a pig from you. Yeah, Old Time Swine in uh, Henderson, Texas. Awesome. Pigs are stupid. <laughs> uh, we're a little bitter that we um, we hope this method is off by about a hundred pounds, <laughs> maybe a hundred and twenty pounds. But you know what, pounds. though, 
people are saying most of their pigs are like six to eight months when they go yeah. when they process them she's barely going to be four months yeah so that may have been on our part a little naive to think we'd get her there at four months well yeah but some of the people we talked to who are who are pretty much experts in that field said that we would be able to but we didn't feed the pig properly for about a month which i think based on what up. those professionals told us no so. based on what some unprofessionals told us but um some things guess, we're going to change what well, are some things we're talking about doing? well first i, I well, well okay so what we're thinking about changing is we're going to we've been slopping our feed i think we're going to put on free feed I'm going to order a feeder this week, mm -hmm. um, or if we keep slopping our feed, we're going to do it three times a day rather than two uh, up until September and see what happens. I'm, we're going to keep the date in September regardless and then see what happens. I've, I've shot, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of feral pigs, and I, I, I feel like she's closer to like between 150 and 175. Based on the pigs I've shot and having them weighed, um, that's how I feel. And not only that, she's... If you look at her from the top, she's much wider than a feral pig is. But I could be way off. Um, I have won both championships of the watermelon weighing that we've done lately. <laughs> I won it. Well, no, no, I won it. But you didn't pick this pig up. <laughs> well, I know, but you're listen. like, you're like, oh yes, like. <laughs> but oh gosh. Pretty good at knowing what things weigh. So that's all I'm saying. So I'm hoping this method's wrong. But either way. Brian Simmons is a great guy with yes. a ton of knowledge. Uh, again, I'll link his channel, uh, leave a link in the description. Y'all go check him out, show him some love. Uh, he really knows what he's doing. He's located in East Texas. We went on like a two hour journey with Jeff and Darcy. A three I, hour tour. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you what town we were in when we got there. But it's Well, Jeff and Darcy lied to us. <laughs> they said, I? oh, it's just a short <laughs> drive. And we and, drove, and it felt like the distance between Dallas and Galveston. That's how long it felt. Yeah, but it was out in East Texas in the middle of nowhere. So they anyway, they took us out there. I don't, I couldn't even tell you what town he's in, but he's in East Texas, uh, out by the Smith Family Ranch. Uh, if you guys are wanting to get some real good pork um, um, that's gonna yield you a lot of meat, uh, he's the guy to go see. So check him out. Uh, check out Smith Family Ranch. Uh, you'll probably see them in the video too. Uh, we spent a whole weekend with them. Great, great family. We'll put a link in the description of them also. And uh, just thank y'all for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, we'll see y'all again. Bye.